So this is the instruction set. Let's see what we have. Uh, so for instance, we have a const instruction that takes an integer as parameter, and uh, its effect is to push n on top of the stack. Likewise, var of x is going to push the current value of x on top of stack, and set var of x symmetrically will pop a value of the stack and assign it to x. Then we have some arithmetic operations, like add, which pops two values, computes their sum, and pushes back the value. Uh, likewise for subtraction and multiplication. And then we have some branches to implement uh, control flow and conditionals. So we have a conditional branch uh, that is going to jump forward by delta instruction. So it's going to, uh, yeah, so each instruction, I I other instructions increment the PC by one. So just continue with the next instruction. But this one increments it by one, one plus delta, and this one, which is a backward branch, is going to decrement it uh, by delta minus one. And then we have some conditional branches. So they pop two values of the stack, compare them, and if the condition is true, they jump forward by delta. And finally, we have an instruction to say, uh, stop, the program is finished. Uh, Yes, please. Could you say that multiple branch or is so I could run two things I to go backwards? I would, lo I would love to, but uh, just to stay consistent with uh, software foundations, I'm using uh, natural numbers, uh, type nat, of course. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but yes, uh, if you're familiar with Kirk, you would probably put uh, Z, uh, type, uh, type Z instead. Oh. <coughs> okay, so here's a concrete example. So that's a uh, piece of code. I var of x, I const of one, add, set var of x, branch backward by five. And so if we start with pc zero, empty stack, x equal to 12 in the store, then we execute that instruction, pc gets one, store is unchanged, stack is now 12. Const of one, pc is two, stack is now one on top, 12 below, add, takes one and 12 of the stack, pushes back 13, Set var, takes 13 of the stack, update x, sets pc to four, and branch backward of five, so morally we increment the pc to five and then we branch backward by five instructions. So we go back to the beginning and that's an infinite loop. Okay, nothing too surprising here. All right. Um, Oh, uh, maybe I can show you now what it looks like in Kirk. Up, up, up. Uh, so again, nothing uh, really surprising. So that's the definition of the instruction set, just an inductive type, okay? Um, then uh, we say that, uh, so code is a list of instruction. This is a little function that extracts the uh, instruction at position PC. So basically it's uh, looking up the nth element of this uh, list of instructions and returning known if it cannot find it. So stack is a list of natural numbers. Machine state is a triple, nat, which is a PC, the stack and the state. And this is, uh, this is the transition relation. So this, this uh, really gives the semantics for each instruction. So it takes a state to a state and basically there's one case for each instruction. They are all of the form if the code at PC in C exists and is I const of n, for instance, then I transition from PC stack uh, store to here PC plus one, n const stack, so I'm pushing, and the same store, okay? So you can read that uh, pretty comfortably, I think. Uh, here, for instance, uh, we need to pop two numbers, so we ask that the stack contains at least two elements, and we push back their sum. So here's a little trick for subtraction, make sure to subtract in the right order. So we are subtracting the top of the stack from the number immediately below, and not the way around, the other way around. One of my very first uh, abstract machines, uh, when I was doing camel-like, I uh, got it wrong for floating point subtraction, and it took like two months for anyone to notice. Um, all right, and then we have the branches here with some arithmetic on the PC. Okay, so you can read that uh, 
if you want. Um, but what's what is more interesting is uh, now how do we define the uh, behavior of a program? So let's say we start the machine is an, in an initial state, and what do we do? Well, we change conditions as much as we can. And then three possible behaviors arise. One is termination. So after a while, um, let's see, what do we do here? Yeah, so we start the machine at zero with an empty stack and some initial state. And maybe, uh, so in zero, one or several conditions, so this is the star operator uh, that, that is defined in a, in a little library called sequence that you can find in, in, uh, on the web page. So basically, a star of a uh, relation is a reflexive transitive closure of that relation. So if uh, in zero, one, or several conditions, we get to a state where we are at a PC where the instruction is halt, the stack is empty, and we get this final state. And then we say, okay, we've successfully terminated, and this is the final state. There's another case, which is that you can do reductions for uh, transitions forever, okay? And that is divergence. We saw that example of with the uh, uh, loop, for instance. And so again, in sec is of a relation means uh, infinitely many uh, 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 transitions. Um, and so in this case, we say that we diverge. And then there's one third case, which is, which we really want to avoid, is a machine uh, crashes or goes wrong. Basically, it's going to do one or several transitions to a state that cannot make any more progress, okay? And, uh, well, either the code at PC is not fault, maybe there is no code at PC, or maybe it's some other instruction that cannot make progress, or the stack is not empty. Um, and actually, so here are some examples of, of code uh, that go wrong. And uh, you can try to uh, prove that in Kirk, it's not too hard. Uh, so for instance, if we have a uh, code that is just I, the add instruction, okay? And we started on an empty stack, so add cannot make a transition, it wants at least two things on the stack, okay? And now if you do copious inversions in Kirk, you will find out indeed that, uh, 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 that, that you are in this uh, situation. Uh, another case of going wrong is uh, we have a branch that goes uh, uh, off, okay? So for instance here, we're branching forward by two instructions, but, uh, but there's no code that follows. So we get to a PC that corresponds to no instruction, and that is also a crash. Okay? Good. Um, how do I shift? Not yet. Uh, all right, yeah, well, I just, uh, this is uh, just what I said. So again, initial states, PC0, some initial store, empty stack, and uh, if we terminate, we should stop on a halt instruction with an empty stack. Okay, so now uh, let's compile, let's translate imp to this uh, little machine. Um, so remember in imp you have arithmetic uh, um, expressions and Boolean expressions and commands. So we are going to uh, structure our compiler in, in three uh, functions, starting with arithmetic expressions. So the general contract for the code we want to generate for A is that, um, well, so it should be a list of instructions so that if we start the machine at the beginning of this list of instructions with some stack and some uh, state, then in a finite number of steps, we should reach uh, this instruction, which is one after the code for A, with a stack that is unchanged, except that now the value of A has been pushed on top, and the store is unchanged. And that's a fairly classic uh, compilation scheme. It's called the uh, translation to reverse Polish notation. Um, if some of you have used uh, Hewlett Packard uh, calculators, uh, you know, you know what reverse Polish notation is. You don't say one plus two, you say one, two plus. Okay. Um, so, and, and basically when you use one of those calculators, you're running in your mind the very algorithm that we are going to write down now. 
uh, which is uh, yeah, which is uh, the function compile ax in comp in in this module. So let's see. Uh, yeah, let's have a look at it. So it's a prototypical recursion of our expressions. So base case is well, if the expression is a constant, num of n, then we just generate the code const n that pushes that constant, and the contract is fulfilled. If it's a variable v, then we generate i var of v, and then there are the recursive cases. For instance, if the expression is a1 plus a2, then we generate the code that computes a1, leaves its value on the stack. Then we append, so this is list concatenation, we append the code that computes A2 and leaves its value on the stack. And now in the stack we have the values of A1 and A2, so we can add them together. And again, the contract is fulfilled. We've left uh, the proper value in the stack. And likewise for minus and multiplication. So let's do a few examples, if you want. Oops. Um, so for instance here we're Compiling vx plus one, oh. and uh, it's a bit kind of ugly, but uh, here you see that indeed uh, is doing var vx const one add. And yeah, I don't know if if you kn you know about this uh, eval compute thing, but uh, well, it's a good way to run uh, functions that you've just defined in Kirk and test them. So here we are doing y times oops, x plus something, uh, plus one. And again, so variable y, variable x, const one, add null. Okay, no big deal. All right, and again, so that's a graphical illustration of what happens when you run that code. So for instance, if a equals x, we just run var of x, and indeed that pushes the value of x. And then there are here is an example of recursive decomposition. So for a1 plus a2, you've generated the code for a1 that pushes the value of n1 of a1, then the code for a2 that pushes the value n2 of a2 on top of that, and the final add instruction that does exactly uh, what you want. All right. Uh, so Boolean expressions are a little more tricky. So for Boolean expressions, well, we could leave a Boolean value on top of the stack, true or false, okay? But if you remember the imp language, actually we, we never use Boolean expressions for their values. We use them uh, for branching. So basically to determine whether we take the then branch of an if then else or the else branch or whether we stop or we continue with a while loop, okay? So, so the idea then is to compile Boolean expressions to uh, something that uh, doesn't push any value on the stack, but uh, branches, eventually branches. Um, so either it uh, continues in sequence if the condition goes in one way, or it skips forward by delta instructions if the condition evaluates to uh, the other way, okay? So we have a function with three parameters. So b, which is a Boolean expression, cond, which is the expected result uh, for jumping forward, delta, which is the amount of instructions we need to skip forward if the Boolean value of b is equal to cond, and otherwise we don't skip forward. Okay, and now it gets a little more tricky because you have to compute those relative offsets correctly. Uh, so that's a base case. Uh, the Boolean expression is just comparing two expressions for equality, and we want to jump if the condition is true. So basically, we emit the code that computes the value of a1, leaves it on the stack, then that computes the value of a2, leaves it on the stack, and then a branch if equal instruction that pops those two things, if equal, branch forward by delta instruction, otherwise continues in sequence. And again, that's exactly what we wanted. Uh, the fun begins with uh, and expressions. So for not expressions, we just have to, to switch the, uh, the expected outcome from true to false or false to true. Uh, the fun begins with the and expressions. So when you evaluate B1 and B2, 
If B1 turns out to be false, there's no point in evaluating B2, right? You're just wasting CPU cycles, and we compiler writers hate that. So, uh, so we want to short circuit the evaluation of B2 if B1 happens to be false. And we'll do that by jumping over that code cleverly. So for instance, if we want to branch forward if B1 and B2 is false, so we first generate the code by B1, instructing it to skip forward if B1 is false by this carefully computed amount, carefully computed so that we should go there. However, if B1 is true, then we continue in sequence with the code that evaluates B2, skips forward delta instructions if it is false, and continues here if it is true. So mission accomplished, we get here only if B1 and B2 are true, and there in all other cases. And now if we want to branch if the condition is true, then we have to arrange our jump slightly differently. So here we are going to skip if B1 is false, but a smaller amount, and here skip if B2 is true. So all in all, we get, uh, we get the corresponding, uh, we get this uh, code definition. Uh, where we have a slightly mysterious subset that pop up. So you see, well, if B is the always true expression, then, well, either we don't do anything or we branch forward, depending on the expected outcome. For false, it's the other way around. For uh, in the EQ case, we just saw, uh, evaluate two expressions and then follow them by a branch is equal or a branch is not equal instruction. For a less than or equal condition, well, same thing. Uh, for a not, well, we just, as I said, we just uh, negate the, uh, take the Boolean negation of the expected outcome. And for B and, well, we play this little trick uh, that I showed you. Uh, and with a slightly mysterious offset uh, here. But trust me, we will, we will prove that it is the right offset. Okay, so whoops examples. So let's see. So here we are asking to jump forward by 42 instructions if uh, x equals 1. And indeed that's exactly what this code is doing, right? Uh, here, ooh, getting complicated. Uh, ah, yeah, so this is one of those and. So we want to jump forward 42 instructions if the end of ooh, 1 less than or equal x or x less than or equal 10 is false. Yeah, so that's typical range, range check. And so here, let's see, what do we have? Constant 1, so we compare, compare 1 and bx, skip forward 40, 45 instructions, which should take, the, take us exactly where we want and then compare x with 10 and skip uh, forward 42 instructions if the comparison falls in the right direction. And, uh, oh, yeah, this one is cute. Uh, so this is a really stupid uh, um, calculation, not of uh, true and false, okay? And ta-da, it reduces to one instruction. Okay, so our compilation scheme is not too bad. It's not computing not of true and false. It's just resolving it statically. All right, and to finish, uh, well, to finish, we only have to deal with, whoops, only have to deal with uh, commands. Yes, please. 